When I first started bench pressing, I was one of the weakest guys at the gym. I remember actually being embarrassed to bench in front of all the other people at my high school, and I would go to a separate gym after school to work on it privately. Since then, I've really improved my bench press, and I did it naturally just by using a couple simple methods that I'm about to share with you today. I know how frustrating it can feel to be weak with this exercise, so I want to go over five specific things that you can start doing right away to improve your bench press. And you don't have to just take my word for it because these five strategies that I'm about to show you today have all been tried and tested by the best benchers in the business. As long as you use them consistently, you'll be amazed at how quickly your bench pressing power will skyrocket. So let's get started with our first method, something known as compensatory acceleration training or CAT. This involves using explosive force to power out of the bottom portion of the bench. To start, you want to select a heavy enough weight that will barely allow you to squeeze out 8 reps. When bringing the bar down towards your chest, you want to imagine that the bar explodes as it touches your chest, powering back up to the starting position. By exploding as hard as possible on the positive or the lifting portion of the rep, you'll be able to use the improved leverage and momentum as the weight drives up to push through the traditional sticking point, which is just before lockout. One study found that sticking points on the bench press usually happen once you're 90% through the lift. Another study found that sticking points happen because of a lack of transitional phases and not producing enough force to overcome the weight. The researchers in this study concluded that focusing on explosive power off the chest and carrying that power all the way through to lockout is vital to improving your bench. They also found that having better control on the eccentric part of the lift will help with getting the weight back up as well. So the goal should be to lower the weight to your chest in a slow and controlled manner and then explode up as fast as you can. If you aim to get enough speed after coming off your chest, you'll be able to overcome the traditional sticking points. Another study focused on muscle activity during the upward movement portion of the bench press. Researchers broke the upward phase of the bench into three parts. Phase one was the pre-sticking point, phase two which was the actual sticking point, and phase three was when the barbell sped up again after moving past the sticking point. On average, the sticking point was reached somewhere between one-fifth and one-third of a second after the bar came off the chest. And this is where we would want to really try to explode and accelerate the barbell upward. Since speed times strength equals power, the greater the explosive speed you can generate, the more power you'll have to get through the sticking point. Before starting, there are a couple things that you want to remember. First of all, you should always remember to do two to three warm-up sets before you perform your CAT sets. Second, when you start your CAT sets, even though you're exploding, you should still control both the way down and the way up to prevent injuries. Let's move on. Our next method that you can use to improve your explosive benching power is plyometrics. You see, on top of the sticking point, when you bench press, you'll experience a natural safety mechanism just before lockout that slows the bar down to prevent the hyperextension of your joints. This slowing down as you near lockout is what often causes people to fail on the exercise. With the right plyometric exercises, you can overcome this mechanism and that'll ultimately make it easier to achieve the lockout. This was demonstrated in one study where college athletes who were experienced bench pressers participated in three tests of their one rep max, and each of these tests was separated by five days. In the first test, they performed a series of one rep sets. Each set was done with increasing weight loads until they got to their max lifts. In the second and the third test, in random order, they performed either two sets of plyometric push-ups or two sets of medicine ball chest throws, and immediately afterwards, they would attempt their one rep max. Interestingly, all the athletes experienced a considerably greater one rep max after performing the plyometric exercises than after building up with the sub-maximal lifts. In fact, the average increase in weight lifted was 4% higher when doing plyometrics. So a guy who benched a maximum of 275 after the standard warm-up would have been able to lift 286 pounds if he did the plyo exercises instead. Now for you to incorporate this for yourself, I have three excellent moves that you can add to your routine starting today. The first is upper body box jumps. You would set this up by placing two three-inch high boxes on either side of your body, and then you would get down into a push-up position. 
Next, you would perform a push-up and explode out of the bottom of the position to propel yourself up so that your hands land on the boxes. The goal is to try to get higher than the box on each rep. Then step down and perform your next rep. In total, you want to go for a set of 12 reps. The next plyo move is a slightly different version of an explosive push-up. Here, you would get down in what looks like a regular push-up position, but instead of having both hands on the floor, you would place one hand on a box that's three inches off the floor and the other hand on the floor. Once again, you would explode out of the bottom of the push-up, trying to come up as high as you can, and you would land with both hands on the box. And again, you would aim for the same 12 reps with this exercise. The final plyo move is what I call the medicine ball repel. Here you would lie on the floor and have your training partner stand over you with the medicine ball in his hands. As he drops the ball down to you, cradle it and then power it back to him as forcefully as you can. And for this one, you're only going to want to aim for 6 to 8 reps. You would want to do your plyo training exercises twice per week. You could either use it to warm up for the bench press or you could do it on the days that you're not bench pressing. Either way, do it at the beginning of your workout before you begin lifting weights and perform the three exercises back to back as a circuit. Let's move on. The next strategy to explode your bench is to start dead bench pressing. This involves performing the bench press inside a power rack with the pin set at a height so that the bar sits about an inch above your chest. From this dead starting position, you would push up to lockout. So you're essentially cutting out the part of the movement where you have to slow down the bar enough to bring it to a stop. This gets rid of the stretch reflex, which is an elastic effect that activates as your muscles get stretched and when you transition from eccentric to concentric. This stretch reflex forces your body to bring more muscle fibers into action. You can see this clearly if you watch someone that tries to jump really high. You'll notice right away that before jumping up, they first have to squat down to take advantage of that muscular stretch reflex to be able to propel higher off the ground. The same concept applies to benching. If you've never tried this before, you should know that you won't be able to use as much weight when dead benching, but you will develop a huge amount of strength in the starting portion of the upward drive. This type of training where you're mostly focused on the upward drive is considered concentric training. And some studies show that concentric training can really help with improving strength and power faster. One study that specifically compared concentric to eccentric training for bench press found that while both groups made significant strength gains, the concentric group significantly outperformed the eccentric group. The researchers recommended that beginners should incorporate concentric training in addition to full range movements to get stronger faster. One thing to keep in mind is that you should always perform singles when dead bench pressing since the stretch reflex effect will come into play if your reps are too close together. So I want you to rest for 30 seconds between each single rep and do 8 singles per session. If it isn't obvious yet, you should be using a weight that's heavy enough for you to barely be able to squeeze out that one rep as the sets go on. If you do all 8 sets without one failure, you probably didn't go heavy enough. I recommend that you do this once a week at the end of your regular bench pressing sets. The fourth strategy to perfect your bench press has to do with technique. You can lose a lot of your strength potential due to bad form, so fixing those power leaks can go a long way for upping the weight that you're able to lift. First of all, you want to make sure that the bar is centered on the rack. If it's not, your whole body is going to be out of alignment. When you lie under the bench, your eyes should be looking directly up at the bar. To find the ideal grip width, position your elbows at a 75 degree angle to your body and then reach directly up to grab the bar. I usually like to go slightly wider than shoulder width, but everyone's different. You also want to make sure that your feet are directly under your knees. This will put you in the strongest position to push into the ground as you push the weight off of your chest. Next, you'll want to pull your shoulder blades back and together to open up the chest. You almost want to imagine that there's a pencil between your shoulder blades and your job is to make sure that it doesn't fall. This will give you a very stable upper body position to push from. To transfer and combine the strength from your lower body and upper body, keep your core tight and engaged throughout the entire lift. As you push the weight up, contract your glutes, push your feet into the ground and explode the weight off of your chest. You want to make sure that you don't bounce the weight off your chest and don't let your hips come up off the bench. 
Our final strategy to improve your bench is to include auxiliary exercises in your workouts that are designed to boost your bench pressing power. And these auxiliary exercises aren't always just other chest exercises. For example, the first of these is the seated dumbbell shoulder press. We want to strengthen the front delts with this exercise because they come into play as you push the weight up off your chest. So the stronger they are, the more powerful your bench is going to be. To get the maximum strength benefit out of the seated shoulder presses, try to go really heavy in the three to six rep range. You should also include pause reps to develop that explosiveness when pushing off of the chest. A pause rep is when you stop halfway through a rep and hold it there for about three seconds before pushing through to complete the rep. The next auxiliary lift that'll help is the floor press. To perform the floor press, you would set it up inside of a power rack with the rack hooks set at a comfortable distance above the ground so that you could bench press off the floor. You'll notice right away that you're only able to come down up until the point that your triceps meet the floor. That means that this exercise will allow you to concentrate on that top third portion of the movement where most people hit their sticking point. This also means that this is a great exercise to increase tricep strength, which is also critical in that final push to lockout. When performing floor presses, you should go really heavy and pyramid up to a three rep max over four to five sets. This basically means that you're gonna add weight and do less reps with each set. Start with eight reps on your first set, four to five reps on your second and third set, and by your last two sets, you should be going for a three rep max. The last auxiliary exercise to explode your bench is the lat pull down. The reason is because your back is the launching pad for the bench press, so it's critical that you build the strength and stability in your lats to allow you to explode that bar off the chest. To do this efficiently, I want you to perform a modified version of the lat pull down. Position yourself on a lat pull down machine with your grip width the same distance you would use if you were bench pressing. Now lean back so that your body is in a similar position to the bar as if you were about to bench press. This should put you at about a 70 degree angle from the floor. You want to stay in this position throughout the entire exercise. Try to not allow your upper body to move forward as you bring the bar back up with every rep. You want to imagine that you're doing a bench press in reverse. The key is to squeeze and engage your lats, controlling them through both the upward and the downward phases of the movement. Do four to five sets of these lat pull downs, and just like before, I want you to pyramid from eight reps to a three rep max. Well, that's it guys. I really hope this video has helped you out. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I release more free tips and tricks just like the ones you found in this video. Also, if you're looking for the fastest way to build muscle and get stronger at the bench press as well as all the other key compound lifts and you want to do that without having to go through years of trial and error, check out my six week muscle building challenge. Clients of mine that complete this challenge are increasing their lean body mass by 5% in only 42 days. With this challenge, you'll get a customized meal plan, a progressive 42 day workout plan designed to build muscle fast, and an accountability coach to help guide you through the entire process. The best part is, as long as you complete the challenge without cheating and without quitting, you can have the whole course and all the materials for free. To find out more, click the link below in the description, or you could just visit my website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.